This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. The topic for today is Millennials in the Workplace. Attract emerging leaders with purpose, not perks. Millennials have been called the job hopping generation, but research reveals that Millennials are loyal and engaged when companies offer them ways to grow and make a difference. What do emerging leaders want? That is the million dollar question. In fact, it may be a hundred billion, with a B, dollar question. Millennials, those born between 1980 and 1996, are now the largest generation in the workforce. And companies are waging an expensive war to attract the most promising leaders among their ranks. The war is often waged with perks. Some companies offer creative perks, like on-site acupuncture, free travel, and nap pods, an attempt to lure talented millennials with work-life balance and a fun, positive co corporate culture. So, if perks aren't the answer, what can companies do to attract, retain, and engage young leaders? The good news is that offering a sense of purpose in your organization may not be as difficult or costly as you think. This afternoon, our Sister Power VIP guest, my dear friend and Marada Director of Marketing and Business Development, Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor, and Diana Lee Lloyd is a marketing coordinator at Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor. Welcome to Sister Power. Thank you. We're, thank you. Oh, We're so, so glad you're here. here. We've been talking about this subject. And tell us a little bit what, about what you do at Pacific Aviation. Well, what you have here is like half of the marketing team. Half? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, we're a team of four lean and mean uh, marketeers that run uh, a nonprofit marketing organization at Pearl Harbor Pacific Aviation Museum, and I'm the director of marketing and business development. My job is to help them make money, and um, my lovely millennial friend here is one of my peeps. So we have uh, we have a pretty tight group. We have wonderful consultants we work with. Um, I manage the whole department and all the consultants. We have Chinese consultants, Japanese consultants. We have p public relations consultants. We have a tour company, an event salesperson that works in Waikiki. So I manage all that. Diana works um, uh, with me managing a lot of those projects for me. And I'll let her tell you who she is. Yes, my name is Diana Leroy. Thank you for having us today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm um, a marketing coordinator. I just joined the team, which I'm really excited about. I handle the Facebook analytics and I also assist in anything that Anne needs or <laughs> needs assistance with. Um, digital and traditional advertising. Yeah, we're not strictly we're not strictly digital, but we are very heavy digital and of course the millennials are a blessing to all us boomers who've actually forgotten how to use half the digital stuff in the world because it changes every 15 minutes. These guys were born with a computer in their crib. Yeah. You know, they, that's just how it is. So uh, they're a beautiful blessing to us. We've got the chops. We've got the heavy marketing experience. They've got the amazing vitality, youth, and know-how. Energy. They, and stuff. They know stuff yeah. that I don't know. You know, so it's a wonderful synergy. I think, the, I think the boomers working with the millennials is probably the best synergy going. I don't know where this stuff got started that millennials were so hard to work with well, we're going to clear and unhappy. Today. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not that's not how it happens at our place. Well, before we move forward, you know, you're very humble. I just want to add something about my friend uh, Ann Marada. <laughs> she has received every major international marketing and advertising award, including SMEI's distinguished sales and marketing executive marketing Genius Award. Congratulations. I was stunned. I, they, they, they gave that to me. That was a nice thing. Yes. Deserving. Well, let's, let's, let's get this party started. Okay. Let's you wanna, get this you party wanna do started. it the way we start yeah, a party? Let's do it. Okay. I'm, let's do this, Dion. You want to do this the I way love, we start? And this is yeah. what you do at your meeting. You were telling when me. When we have a meeting, this is one of the things that we do, we millennials and boomers who like to. I think you have to keep your workplace light. And at the same time, light. 
you know so this is how we make it light all right choose a, pick pick us pick a thought for the okay, day I'll before we start this day. meeting all right all right here we are. let's get started if you want to make peace you don't talk to your friends you talk to your enemies. I like that. They said keep your enemies close. Mm -hmm. I like that. Do I keep this? If you like. Is this, is this a present speak, for does me? Does that speak to you? It speaks to me. Does that speak to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Dion, you want to choose one? Sure. We like it too because it's in a Tiffany box. <laughs> I go. like that too. It makes, it makes us feel richer. <laughs> All right. Mine says uplift everybody and uplift yourself. Mm. I like that. That's nice. Yay! Yay. <laughs> oh, now it's That's your it. turn. Now it's my turn. We always get one that we need that day, too. All of yeah. us. Whenever really? we pick one, it's whatever we have needed. Your strength is your own knowledge. Wasn't I just saying that? That's what the boomers, <clears throat> what we can give the millennials, they give us all of their how to do things new and the knowing what's going on. They're very trend oriented, they know exactly. You know, they stay woke. Yeah, oh, stay know, woke. They stay That's woke. Right. <laughs> Keep it moving. I love that. What, and I share my knowledge. And you share, you mm -hmm. know, what I found is we need each other. Yes, we do. And this is what we have to recognize is what we needed. And I have a question for you, and I have a question for you. Who are they? Who are the millennials? They're just, you know who they are? They're the same people that you and I were at her age. That's Only it. tech savvy. Oh, I tech savvy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty tech savvy. I mean, I have to manage tech savvy millennials. We manage three. We manage Chinese, Japanese, and American English mark, uh, websites, and we do tons of digital advertising and marketing. So I have to know tech too. But I can't find diddly squat, and they can find it in two seconds. I know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we need one another. <clears throat> what they need is they need for me to show them all the traditional stuff that they're not even teaching these days in school. Wisdom. Yeah, and and. And to know, and to know, yeah, yeah, and to bring the, you know, the party favors. I love that. And, and the donuts. Okay, and the donuts. Okay, wait. She needs a few more she donuts. She brings organic over there. apples. Okay, I do actually oh. bring organic okay, apples. Okay, great. <laughs> and my question for you, Diana, what millennials want from employers? Knowledge and just be able to have potential and. Want to grow, want to want to help grow. Um, just guidance, yeah. Guidance. And so, how do you work together? Tell me about your your work schedule. I, I try not to be bossy, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm older, so I'm bossy. We can help that I'm bossy. I was a big sister all my life, right? So you're just born bossy, kind of. But I try not to be bossy. One of the things we do, we do this little thing when we have our staff meetings. We start our staff meetings. We are in a big, beautiful, double-wide trailer that's just ours. So it's just our team in there. So we get to kind of scream and yell and, you know, we call it the four-letter word trailer, you know. So if you want to say anything, <laughs> that's where you come. I mean, people from other departments come into our trailer because that's the crazy marketing oh, trailer. I like that. Yeah, and so we talk regular. It's not like we're gutter talkers, but we're like, we're not as buttoned up as you are in a corporate environment. And I think that's really important. Well, we we also go to lunch together all the time. Yes. We go to lunch together. We like it. We, en we enjoy it. It's, it's like, it, it makes us like family. And, then, and so then when I have to be a bitchy boss, okay. which sometimes I am, all I have right. to be. I think you can say that on air. I think you can say that. Well, I hope I can. Okay. <laughs> and then, if, and then if, if, if I have to be bossy, hopefully they will take it a little more in stride. Because you know, the, I get they don't see what rolls downhill all the time, and I'm in the, in the pathway of it. So, we try to have, we try to make it more like a family and more fun. Well, we do have some pictures to yeah. show yeah. that show, and and we will roll them as soon as they're ready to show that Pacific Aviation you do have fun. Look Ooh. at you, girl. You look <laughs> just fabulous. We do have fun, and yeah, look, look, fun. look, we make look, work fun. We make work fun. You make work fun. And what is that behind you? That's the P-40. That's the Warhawk. That's an amazing warbird. We have 50 aircraft at that place. And we get to play. This is the kind of advertising we get to do out there. Now, this is an amazing opportunity for millennials to work in a situation like this. It was an amazing opportunity for me to start working in a situation like this. It's so fun. I mean, who doesn't want to be there and have to sell that stuff? That's gorgeous. And we're a, 
we're a sacred battlefield. You know, we're where Pearl Harbor started. So mm. we're on an amazing piece of land. And so we feel like we have a mission. You have a mission. Yeah. And I wanted to show the Pacific Aviation logo for the visitors who are tuning in, the global um, audience that we have. I want them to see the Pacific Aviation logo that we have on hand here so they know exactly where to come. It is a fun place. We've been there several times. I've had a wonderful time. You have so many different events there, and it'll come up soon. And while we're rolling to that, and, and Ray will show the, um, the logo, there it is right there, Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor, Ford Island, Hawaii. Give us the hours. Oh, we're open every day, 8 to 5. We're a, we're a visitor, well, we're part of, part of Pearl Harbor attraction, so we're a visitor destination, so we're open seven days. We're only closed three days a year, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day, and New Year's Day. Sounds like retail. Yeah, it does. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, we are retail. You we are have, retail, we sure. Have, we have a retail store. We have a restaurant. We have flight simulators. We have all kinds of things that you can pay for when you get out there. So it's kind of, it's a museum with a lot of other things to do. It's a destination. It's a destination. Yeah. All right. How millennials could improve your business? Um, do you want to address that? Because you have ideas. I love that. She has wonderful <laughs> ideas. I need some. I have a business as well, and I'm always looking. My son, who's 31 years old, he has his master's in IT, and anything that I want to know that's fresh and new, I call him. Mm -hmm. And they, you, you have excellent mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. that I never thought of. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe uh, like social media, things that are trending now. Um, for example, Instagram yeah. and how our Instagram stories, yeah. that's a new thing that happens. So uh, me and our coworkers try to get our stories up. We do our uh, museum store, different little products and items, and then send them straight to the link where they can go ahead and buy it. Yeah. You do digital marketing as well. Yes. You do. Tell me about the digital marketing. <laughs> well, basically, it's buying Facebook and Google. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we do all the social media. We have like five people working social media all the time on five different channels. But the, the digital marketing is basically paying for pl pay for play. We have to go buy some Facebook, and we have to go buy some Google, and we have to go buy some Yelp, and we have to go buy some tri TripAdvisor. Wow. Yeah. But I want to show another picture about uh, Amelia Hart. Yeah, Earhart. Earhart. Yeah. And that's such a fascinating, you did have a, a, an event. Well, she, there. yeah. Well, that we, was we one have, of the Every events. year we have her birthday. That's her birthday uh, party. Every year we have, there's, uh, Deanna is on the right, and our other millennial lady that's in my department, Lauren Callawag, is on the left. And the women in the center are pilots, except for the one that's dressed as Amelia. Oh, in and the that's, red our, that's our impersonator. Yeah. I love it. Yes. How creative. Yeah, and that was her birthday celebration. We have it every year on the July 24th, which is when her birthday actually is. So we have it. It's a free day. You can come out. People dress up. One person in the family dressed his, historically, not, not like so much like a mule. You can be in a guy's suit, too, but dressed like an aviator, and you, the whole family comes free. It's fun, and we have cake. You know, so we do a lot of those kind of events, and those are fun event things for the community. But basically, you know, we are a visitor destination, so most of our digital marketing is focused globally, globally. because we're a global brand. Sure. So, yeah. So we have to think beyond, beyond this market. Well, in your world, Anne, I see that you're surrounded by millennials, mm -hmm. which I think is such a smart uh, business move. How to attract millennials in the workplace? Um, food. They love food. <laughs> and they eat healthy. The millennials eat healthy. And they don't mind that I bring oh, goodies, organic. Goodies. Yeah. Like our Easter bunny goodies. And, oh, uh, right. She we, brings us presents. I bring, we have Easter, yeah. I celebrate, I'm a big celebrator. I cannot stop being a mother, I guess is probably sure. what it is. But everybody needs that kind of nurturing. Everybody should nurture their people that they work with. Though That's your family. That's your family. You need to keep nurturing. And I think a lot of people feel very off, off put by having young folks around them because they feel like they're out of touch. And the truth is, 
none of us are out of touch. We're all really in sync, you know. We're all just making, we're all here walking each other home, you know, trying to get to the same level of awareness and consciousness and work product and stuff like that. So I was, I did some research and they say use uh, three tips to create a more millennial friendly workplace. And one of them that you mentioned did say, you know, you keep it a fun place. But one word they used, they said, think small. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to address a big issue like social inequality or climate change head on, focus on producing a local small scale impact that your employees can take pride in. So what is one of the things that you take pride in in working at Pacific Aviation? I think growing up and living in Hawaii, it's, it's such a special place. And to be able to share where you, where you come from and where you raise with people who, you know, spend and save up some life savings to come and yeah. visit our museum is really special. So. We also, it's a nonprofit organization, so we get to work with volunteers, which is really inspiring because people just want to donate their time. So it's really nice. Great. So personally, what you do, I notice, Anne, you personalize your organization's values. So remember, you just need your employees to know what the company believes. You need them to take ownership of your values enough to act on them. So how do you push the envelope for them to act on them? I'm uh, probably one of those, I don't know, they used to call us the ena enablers. I tell them how special they are all day long. Uh. I don't think there's anything wrong with thanking people and telling them they're awesome. You know, we forget to do that in the workplace. We get worky instead of friendly. And I just try to tell them how amazing they are. If you, if you don't even know what you're doing, you're still amazing because you're there trying to do it. So we're all going to learn the process. Well, we, you know, it, it's all about showing up. But we're going to take a small break, and we're going to come back and continue our conversation with millennials in the workplace. Super. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sound. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Sister Power, and our topic for today is Millennials in the Workplace, and we're here with Ann Morata and Diana, and they both work at Pacific Aviation Museum, which is such a fun, 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 fun place. Uh, let's move, take this a little further. I did some research, and it says, which I love, millennial women are making up an increasing percentage of the workforce and earning more than women of previous generations, partly due to their high rates of earning college degrees, now higher than men. Now tell me about that in your workplace. It's really true. Well, first of all, I'm a feminist. I really believe in supporting women and helping women get to their places because when I was first out of college, it was, it, 
actually, I think the glass ceiling has not changed. It's still the same. So I'm a very big proponent of women in the workplace. So I want to, I really want to help people grow into that. But um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, what do you think? You're, you're, you're right there with your girlfriends and your conversation, is it mostly about work or how you're going to improve the world? You, you talk about how you're improving the company? I would say it's, it's doing your job and, you know, we strive, I think as millennials, we strive to, to be better and to approve. I improve on anything that we're trying to get done for the museum. They're or? Re they're real focused. Uh, At least the that's ones what I read. everyone that's what it says, they're yeah. very focused. They're very focused people. I've I've had nothing but millennials work in my department for their brilliance, for their focus, and for their uh, passion. I I don't know where this where they got the bad rap that they weren't because they come out of college and they have spent so much money so much money getting a, a degree and yes the women have worked harder and gotten more degrees than the men because we feel like we have to to mm -hmm. get the same amount of money and yet we get out and don't get the same amount of money do you know what i mean that's the it's just there is a disparity still which i try to really work against but they want they want to do so well because they spent so invested so in their education so my, me i just want to help them get to the next plane I don't even, I think of where a lot of the disconnect is, is that employers think they're going to keep their millennials forever, that they're going to be lifers, and they're not. They're going to stay with you, and they may stay a little bit longer with me because I take them to lunch every day, right? Oh, all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have a hot tub in the middle of our office, but you know. <laughs> no, but they may stay a little bit longer sure. with me, but they're not going to stay with me forever. And they're here to get what they can get from me, and I'm here to get what I can get from them. And we're here to make Pacific Aviation Museum the best it can be because there's a purpose out there for that place. You know, that's a sacred battlefield. That's a sacred battleground. And I think we all have that kind of passion. So they try really, really hard to please. They really, really work at pleasing. And it's not easy out there to get your arms Deanna's rather new, so three, four months, right? So she's right still in the, oh my God, dear, in the headlines sure. phase of her employment. And so she really, I can see when she's like, oh, I got that. Oh, I got that. Oh, I got that. And fast and move on and move on because there's so much to get your arms wrapped around out there. There's just 50 aircraft, all this history, two hangars filled with history. And, you know, there's just a ton of stuff to know. And then she has to take it and translate it into a Facebook mark, a Facebook post, well, a really good Facebook post. Oh, a Google event, you know. But she has to learn it and do it. And they try so hard. They really try so hard. I love that because this, the millennial branding said that millennials connected to an average of 16 coworkers on Facebook, and I think that's a good thing. I really do. You stay connected and you're sharing ideas. And also, it says it costs an average of $24,000 to replace each Gen Y employee. So I yep. think that the moving, yep. what, I, what I'm taking away from your conversation is we can't take this personally. Right. We can't take it And when I was a young boss back in the day when I ran my ad agency in Los Angeles and was younger and didn't have this experience, mm -hmm. when, when my first employee quit me to go move on to a better job I took it personally yeah I took it so personally but I've gone through so many Millennials out there that have worked three four four and a half that's what I've gotten three four five and then they move on and I help them move on and you stay in contact we with stay them. we do we we yes. and with the old ones that were both we get together and we have Salahana Oh, the I new met, ones and the old ones. I met Gabe through you. Yeah, yeah. And we have another picture here that we can show of you ladies having a good time. <laughs> I, I want to come and work and, well, I can help volunteer. Maybe. Help we're, volunteer we're, at Pacific We work Aviation. hard, though. I don't want you to think, oh. See, look at you having a good time. I know, oh, but look goodness. what we get to work with. Look at those amazing oh, uh, helicopters. It. Yep. That's Lauren and Deanna and me. And we thought we looked like Easter. So Easter we, eggs. We were Easter eggs. <laughs> So we did an Easter egg shot. And what I love about working with the millennials, and, and you know, 
I feel very grateful to be a baby boomer. We're still here. Yep. We're still thriving. Yep. We're still, you know, pushing the envelope further. And we're still trying to hit that glass ceiling. Is you can laugh and have fun and be silly. Yep. You know, and that just keeps you just keeps you vital. Yep. I that wonderful article that just came out. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll talk about that after the break, I Well, guess. what about that? I oh. think we're almost done, but I wanted to talk oh, about this. yes, let's look at this. This is really our philosophy. We have this up on well, our... Well, read it to us. Tell, tell us what the well, philosophy is. You can never spend too much time thinking about, worrying about, caring about your people, because at the end of the day, it's only the people who matter, nothing else. David Ogilvy, one of the greats in advertising, Ogilvy Advertising. Well, this has been so much fun. I can't believe it's almost over. And finally, finally, they are the millennials, are dedicated to wellness, devoting time and money to exercising and eating right, which we all should be doing. Their active lifestyle influences trends and everything from food and drink to fashion. And I would like for us to keep this conversation moving. When a baby boomer comes into the millennials and you're, they're applying for a job, remember that there's something I can add to the table. Mm -hmm. And baby boomers, when the millennials mm -hmm. come to you for a job, remember that they also have something to add to the table. Mm -hmm. And we can just all work together. Can we just all get can't along? Can't we all just yes. get along? Can we all just get along? <laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been so much fun. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Sister Power. We're on every other Thursday. And there's a part two. You know, we have to come back and finish oh, yeah. this and do this. So, again, thank you. Thank Ocean. you for having me. Oh, you're yes. very, very welcome. Thank you so much, Oceans Sharon. of Aloha. Namaste. Oceans <laughs> of peace and love. love.